What's up everyone, it's Patrick from Purple Park Studios and uh, I'm here today uh, for the first time ever actually with a highly requested tutorial. So if you're watching this um, you and if you're a Blender user you may be familiar with uh, Ian Hubert and his you know techniques of exporting or I'm sorry importing images as planes into Blender and uh, kind of composing CG environments around them um, and that was something that I really got into um, and I've been having a lot of fun with it, experimenting with stuff. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to how to do that, and not only how to do that, but how you can uh, use Blender to your advantage to kind of really sell this effect or technique. So the first thing I like to do is just um, hit one into front view, and it, if you don't even know how to bring an images planes into Blender. Um, the first thing you need to do is go up to edit, go down to preferences, and um, under the add-ons tab here you can just type in images as planes. And if that's not checked you want to check this box here um, and that should enable the add-on for you. And now uh, you can bring in uh, photos and uh, images as planes will also let you bring in video clips as image sequences which is really cool. So in order to add one in you can hit shift A go to image and now you should have you should see this where it says images as planes that might not have been there before if you didn't have the add-on enabled so you can go ahead and click that and I saved my footage on the desktop here so I'm going to select this footage here um, with which this is uh, pre keyed footage this was originally filmed on a green screen and then I keyed it out uh, in After Effects and if you don't know how to key uh, footage out I'm gonna leave a link to one of my tutorials on how to key footage out in After Effects and then I'll also leave a link to a tutorial that shows you how to key out footage in Blender in case you don't have After Effects so you can go ahead and select your footage and you have these options here you can uh, there's principled shadeless or emit so if you choose emit your footage will be emitting light. Um, I actually don't want that in this situation, so I'm just going to hit import images as planes, and you can always change this later in the shading editor. So I'm going to select import images as planes, and this is what I get. It's a flat plane there, so the first thing I'm going to do is hit R, X, and 90 to just rotate that in the right uh, direction there. And then I'm going to hit G, Z, and 1 to just move it up a bit. And if you really want to, you can bring it down and line it up with this, the x-axis here, but I'm not going to do that. Now, there's a couple ways we can view our footage, because right now we can't see anything. Uh, it just looks like a regular plane. Now you can go to your uh, look dev mode here, and that will allow you to see it. Or if you uh, just want to work still in the, you know, the modeling mode, you can hit this drop down area, or <laughs> drop down arrow area. <laughs> And just click texture and that will allow you to also see um, and this is what you get you just get a flat 2d plane here so obviously you know you don't want to blow the illusion um, you're gonna be limited in some sense on what you can do with the camera but there's a lot of tricks that you can do now if you watch the video chip mug um, you'll see that this looks completely different in in the shot um, so what I actually did which this isn't a modeling tutorial but I essentially tapped into edit mode, right clicked, and you can you can subdivide this plane here. And it's pretty important to do that. Um, I, I think I subdivided it about 10 times um, in the video. And then I just went in and I deleted these points here and uh, just kind of cleaned up everything here like that. And now I essentially started to model an environment. So uh, in a little bit we will take a look at that um, the project file with the you know completed environment modeling and the lighting. Um, but before we do that, there's just a couple important things to note about when you're bringing an image as plane into Blender. So if we go to our shading tab here, I'm just going to turn down this uh, world opacity here. So now that I'm in the shading editor, uh, what I usually like to do is just turn the roughness up a bit um, because, I mean, humans are shiny, but they're not like you know super shiny <laughs> um, and any like shininess should already be on them from um, when you actually shot the footage and it is important to pay attention to the way you light your footage uh, so it doesn't end up looking overexposed after you key things out and bring it in and then it just makes lighting the scene extra hard and then you spend so much time fixing 
the color and you end up just screwing everything up so it's just really important to make sure you light your footage the correct way and have a plan before you bring it in on how you're going to light it in the 3d environment later on um, and what we can do if we go back to the layout here and hit shift a and i'm going to add in a plane and just scale this uh up and then I'm just going to hit G and Z to move it up. And I'm just doing this as an example here. If we go to our look dev mode here and we give this uh, plane just a material, let's just make it like metallic and turn the roughness way up like this. What we can do is select our images planes here. And if we go down to the blend mode and the shadow mode, change the blend mode to alpha hashed and also change the shadow mode to alpha hashed. And then if you turn on screen space reflections and ambient occlusion, um, your, your footage will be able to react to you know, reflections and cast shadows. Um, if we turn this, go on our plane and we turn this roughness up a bit, all the way up, um, and then we can go to rendered mode, shift A, add in a light, G, Z, move that up. You can see, and this is even just an EV. Um, maybe we'll just move the light. Out. You can see that your footage will actually cast shadows, and that will not work um, if you do not. It will not work properly if you don't have this uh, set to alpha hashed. I think this blend mode might work with alpha blend. Yeah, so it will work with alpha blend. I think the important thing is, yeah, to have this shadow mode set to alpha hashed because otherwise. You know, you can see here with opaque, it's it's just casting the shadow of the entire plane. Um, but with alpha hashed, you're not getting the the uh, the transparency. So it's just important to do that. Something to note. So if we just go into our shading editor real quick one more time, I can go ahead and delete this plane. Um, I'm not going to get too into detail on this, um, but I think it's worth noting that once you composite all the 3D objects and environment around your footage, um, you may notice that everything else is looking really crispy and stuff if everything's textured right, and your footage might look like a little bit too like 2D and flat. Um, with this particular video, I didn't use what I'm about to show you, but I have used it in other videos that have it actually really helped glue the scene together. Um, so what you can do is you can hit Shift A and just add in a bump node and plug the normal into the normal and then what you want to do is hit shift D and duplicate this footage here and just plug the color into the height and you'll see you'll get this very grainy effect um, but you can turn the strength way down and it's important you don't want to zoom too close into your footage because just like anything you know the closer you zoom in the more quality you're gonna lose so as long as I keep it about roughly where I shot um, turning up the strength a bit so you can see it just adds a little bit of detail to the face and and, and uh, you, you don't really necessarily want to turn it up too high because then it's gonna look fake um, but you know if, if we if we set this to something like 0.2 or maybe we'll go 0.4 maybe honest honestly maybe even 0 0.5 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 something like that um, and then we just unplug it you should be able to see the difference. Like here, it's, his face is a little more washed out, um, but by plugging this in, just adds a little bit more detail, at least from a farther back angle. So that can help glue everything together, especially if you are if you have a scene where you have a lot of 3D objects with procedural textures and materials, and they're getting all these cool light reflections and stuff, and this will help, having this bump note on here will help um, reflect light and stuff a little better, at least that's what I think, just based on my experience. So let's, um, let me jump into the session that I used to create Chipmug and I'll just show you a little bit about kind of what you can do with you know, cameras and modeling. All right, so I'm in the actual session and this is actually super convenient. Uh, when I opened it up, the uh, image is plain, it's like this pinkish, sometimes it might look purple. And if you're using anything past Blender 2.8, um, I started to notice that a lot of times the images as planes will turn this color, um, like a, is like the missing texture color. Um, the easy way to fix that is you just go to file and hit save and reload. And that should fix that for you. Um, 
in my case it actually was missing um, I had gone to my desktop and I had dragged it out of this folder so I just dragged it back into the folder um, but this still will happen you will still sometimes get the issue where um, it'll have that missing texture and even if you haven't changed the file location and just the quick easy fix for that again is save and reload so yeah here's the set we will go first to wireframe mode um, and take a look at it from here so you can see that it's basically just a cube with the front face missing um, and then I modeled this little cheap hallway in the back here um, go into this mode here and what I'm gonna do is um, cause I mean the hallway it's just a hallway there's, there's nothing impressive it's literally just like an extrusion an inward extrusion <laughs> and it has like a bevel modifier on the whole thing so I'll go ahead and hide this room here um, these back here are just some quick cheesy lights I modeled um, they weren't going to be close up it didn't have to be anything important and then earlier in the day I uh, had modeled some of these just little boxes with image textures on them um, that I stuck in the scene and I did take advantage of in the shading tab here um, you know the, the bump and I just did a little bit of procedural stuff to just kind of give it because um, I actually cheated here this on the front is an image texture which is very noticeable you can see the seam here but I quickly just recreated um, some some texturing here just to kind of roughly blend the front of that and like I said I knew that the camera wasn't gonna be focused on this but I think like from an angle like this it looks really good and you can't tell so I was more concerned with uh, with all this up here so you know I just uh, let me change the texture here modeled a bunch of this stuff here uh, some quick glasses uh, some just some random electronic devices um, or stuff that look like electronic devices and then of course I've remodeled this whole table here um, so this is basically the set um, you can see here is my camera so uh, let me go back to my layout get into camera mode here and uh, yeah it's the camera is one of the main things um, that is really going to help blend your footage in as well um, and in particular this depth of field here um, I'm not really going to go into depth <laughs> on how to use this um, if you guys want to see a tutorial on the way I use depth of field in my shots let me know but essentially you click depth of field you can use the side dropper I can select any object in the scene and then you can play with the f-stop here and do some pretty cool stuff and animate the camera you can animate the camera you know left and right up and down um, and you can even you can even turn it a little bit um, and it's pretty forgiving <laughs> as Ian Hubert would say it is extremely forgiving um, when making a shot of course if you go too far then it's gonna blow the whole illusion and you don't want to do that so you guys I really hope that this tutorial was helpful and I hope that um, you know you're able to take some of these techniques and incorporate them into your footage um, it is a lot of fun and you can do a lot of cool stuff with this um, so real quick guys before I head out I just want to real quick mention that Purple Park Studios is now on Patreon um, we have three tiers currently and I'm really excited because I think we're gonna be able to give a lot of cool stuff back to the community and tier one the blender project files tier is really cool because every single month you'll get access to two new blender project files and they could be ones that I've used in the tutorial or just ones that the studio has worked on personally um, for personal projects which is really cool because not only you get those project files with the you know you get the models you get the um, the node setups and just all kinds of cool stuff we also have the second tier which is the 3d models tier so you get access to the first tier but you also get access to two exclusive models every single month two new exclusive models that aren't in the first tier and then we have the third tier which you get access to both those tiers but then you also get access to one more advanced tutorial that we wouldn't put on our YouTube channel we don't put on there we will be you know exclusive to patreon members um, so I'm really excited about our future on patreon and um, I think that we're gonna be able to offer a lot more than what we currently have but I think you know you gotta start somewhere so I really hope that it's beneficial for people in the community and giving back a little bit so thanks again guys for watching I will see you in the next tutorial don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't it really helps us out thanks